But I would like just to suggest um, a few things uh, which may have been covered by previous speakers, but perhaps just to reiterate them. Um, I would say that there are probably three or four minimal demands that we can make to the UK government um, until Saudi Arabia does free Raif and Wali, and indeed all political prisoners, um, I think we ought to be very strongly arguing in favour of a halt to all UK arms sales. Now, of course, that's an easy principle to argue for. It's much harder to put into practice and get secured. But, of course, we know the campaign against the arms trade is doing great work, and I think that it's very important that we support their initiatives to try and put pressure on arms suppliers as well as the government to at least cut back, uh, if not ultimately uh, end those sales to the Saudi regime. Um, another idea is that we should press for, at least for the recall of the British ambassador to Saudi Arabia as a way of expressing uh, British disapproval uh, at that regime's policies with regard to these two human rights defenders and other political prisoners. Um, another option would be to initiate sanctions against those Saudi leaders who are implicated in these human rights abuses. You know, Britain, the European Union, and other countries have within their power to institute travel bans um, and other forms of uh, sanction against those leaders and as we know the Saudi leaders and their families often come to London a restriction in their right to come here to own property here to play the tourist to shop here that would be some considerable inconvenience um, I'm sure they will find elsewhere but again even if it only is a minimally inconvenient it sends a signal it says that we're not prepared to look the other way while these gross human rights abuses are taking place. Another option would be for the UK government, and indeed other governments, to refer Saudi Arabia to the International Criminal Court. Yes. Um, you know, the ICC does exist. It's under a lot of pressure. It's under resource. But I think there are quite strong cases uh, against uh, the Saudi government, particularly in relation to torture, which has a universal jurisdiction, you know, even under Britain's own law, Section 134 of the Criminal Justice Act 1988, any state official who either commits, acquiesces, condones, or colludes with an act of torture anywhere in the world can be put on trial in this country. And there certainly are key Saudi officials who, because of their role in government and the state apparatus, are implicated in authorising, condoning and colluding with acts of torture. So I think there's a, a legal case, an arguable legal case, that deserves investigation and assessment uh, and, and possibly to proceed forward with. In terms of what we can do, well, of course, we could lobby our respective members of parliament around those four or five ideas. Um, to try and get some momentum, a core of MPs who are willing to press the government and to put down early day motions and parliamentary questions to keep the issue on the parliamentary political agenda and to again, likewise, keep the pressure on the Saudi regime. They are very, very sensitive. And the statement from the Saudi embassy last week, which expressed outrage at the protests that have been organized today and other protests, it quietly indicates that they are rattled, that they are irritated, and that they are unnerved by the growing scale of public opposition. Otherwise, they wouldn't have issued that statement. So it's, it's proof that we collectively and all the organizations in the past and present are having an effect. We are annoying them, which is good. Um, and of course, I'm sure you're all familiar with the website writetothem.com, writetothem.com. You go on that website, you put in your postcode, it will tell you who your member of parliament is, and indeed who your members of the European parliament are. 
and you can email them direct from that website. So once you've sent an email to your MP, you can just copy and paste and just change the, the name and send it off to your eight uh, MEPs as well. So that's one thing. Um, another thing um, that is also very important is to support the long-standing work of Campaign Against the Arms Trade, which has lobbied against arms sales to the Saudi regime, um, which targets arms suppliers at um, weapons expos, which are held regularly in London. Um, I think that's sort of a kind of an event where the Saudi officials come to see the hardware, to buy it. Um, our presence there in support of the Campaign Against the Arms Trade, I think, would add to the work that they're doing and, and, and give them also a sense of solidarity and support because they've been doing it for a very, very long time. The final thing I'd suggest is that we maybe need to think about ways in which we can get Muslim organisations on board because if we can have a critique of the Saudi regime from an Islamic <coughs> perspective, from you know, major responsible Muslim organisations in this country and other countries, that will also really hurt the Saudis. Mm -hmm. Because they regard themselves as the Muslim voice worldwide, the authority. And to have that questioned and challenged by other Muslim organizations in this country and around the world, I think could be a very, very effective strategy. So organizations like the Muslim Council, <coughs> uh, the Muslim Institute, Inclusive Mosque, Interfaith Ramadan, and all the other plethora of liberal progressive Muslim organizations in this country, their voice, I think, would have a really powerful impact. So I think we should really make a strong effort to liaise with them and work with them and get them on side to challenge the Saudi authorities. But I think we've done a very good job today. It's been a really worthwhile effort. It's got lots of coverage. Uh, Francis Sweden, as you probably heard, wrote a fantastic article in The Independent. I wrote an article in The Telegraph. Um, there have been loads and loads of tweets and other uh, Facebook and social media. It really has got out to a lot of people and of course the thunderclap reached I think over a million people. So that's, that's a really, really good start for this campaign. It's a, it's a really good um, you know, benchmark and I think you know, the more we do, the more people will come on board and the stronger we will get. So thank you.